Hey guys, welcome to part 9 of the mini Gravedigger build and the second part of the steering setup for this little beast. In the last video, we got the Suzuki Samurai steering gearbox mounted. In this video, we'll be installing the electric power steering unit and a metallic green steering wheel. Let's get started. So this is one of the more exciting things that I've gotten for this project and the single most expensive item that I've purchased for this Grave Digger build. Um, but I just don't see any way around it. My little five-year-old is going to have a hard time turning a steering wheel with 15-inch wide tires on the front of it. As painful as it was to my wallet, it was a necessity. So let's check it out. Obviously, there are a lot of ways to do an electric power steering setup. Um, this was just the easiest. It uh, came with the actual, you know, electric power assist unit. It senses the torque you put into the steering wheel and magnifies it and makes things easier to steer. This kit is very complete. You get the, the gearbox and motor, the uh, brain to run it all, the wiring harness, uh, a mounting plate that you could use and even two universal joints with bits of shaft to go off each end to tie it all into your steering system. I'm very excited to get this into the uh, mini grave digger. All right, let's see if we can't figure out where to put it. First, I gotta figure out a good place to mount this electric power steering unit. The output section of this is the area that I'm gonna have to make telescope. That's gonna have to change length to compensate for suspension travel. And then the input side of this will just go up to the steering wheel. And that can be fixed because nothing up here is gonna move in relationship to each other. little bent tubing mount and uh, you know I don't know if it's in the exact right place yet or anything but it gives me something to start with and it's always easier to just kind of create something and then have something to modify than it is to create something from nothing so uh, we're gonna start with this I'm gonna use the uh, a plate that came with the kit kind of put it together and I can kind of clamp it to this and get it in the position I want and see if we can't make this work all right let's do it got the electric power steering unit clamped up into place just to kind of mock it up. Uh, this is the most critical part of the connection here. I've got the output of this electric power steering box going to the input of this samurai steering box. The critical thing I got to do here is make sure that when this chassis is down in its lowest position that this shaft isn't going to bottom out on the bottom of the frame. So it appears that I've got it in a pretty good position where it's at. I went ahead and uh, trimmed the plate that came with the uh, electric power steering unit and uh, cleaned it up and got it ready to, to uh, weld onto here. But I almost feel like I would have been better off just building a new one. For some reason, they powder coated this bracket and we all know how fun it is to get powder coat off of steel. I probably would have been time better spent just making a new bracket. So I'm guessing that uh, most of the people that purchase these maybe bolt this bracket into place instead of weld it. So having it be powder coated ahead of time doesn't hurt anything. But uh, for me, it was a bit of a pain in the butt. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing tacked on here.
Here's looking from the driver's seat out towards the front. You can see the uh, electric power steering box mounted in there. So the Suzuki Samurai steering gearbox came with this little coupler. It obviously matches the splines that are on the input of the gearbox and it just had this little flange here. So I cut out another little flange that could bolt, match those bolt hole pattern. Put a little stub of three quarter inch round in there with two flats so I could attach this U-joint. This steering setup is gonna require four U-joints. So I'll have a U-joint here at the box, uh, the telescoping shaft up to the electric power steering unit that has the second U-joint on the output of it. There'll be a third U-joint at the input of the electric power steering box and then the fourth U-joint will be up at the steering wheel. So we've got quite a bit going on between the steering box and the steering wheel. So I've got the first U-joint attached. That connection is, is all finalized. What I need to work on now is the telescoping section between this and the steering gearbox. I've got the chassis down as far as it will go right now. So that means that this telescoping section of shaft is the shortest that it's going to be. When I raise this up to maximum extension of the suspension, this is four and a half inches longer than it is in this low position. So I'm gonna shoot for getting five inches of travel out of this telescoping section of the steering shaft. What I'm gonna use for that is uh, I bought a section of spline shaft and a coupler to match from my favorite store, the uh, Surplus Center. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn down one end of this to the three quarter diameter and then put a couple flats on it so it'll fit into this U-joint. All right, this turned out pretty good. I took the spline shaft, put it in the lathe, turned it down to three quarters of an inch in diameter and then I took it over to the bill and put some flats on each side. So basically turned that into a double D shape. And that's the shape that uh, fits inside this U-joint. And it turned out great. It fits right in this U-joint. And then you can I'll tighten down these set screws and I'll be able to cut that shaft down to length. And uh, that'll give me the, the spline section. And then I have the uh, female coupler that uh, I'll actually weld to a piece of tubing to extend it and weld it to the uh, shaft that's sticking out here. And that's how I'll get my telescoping shaft for this steering box. I cut down this spline shaft to give me the five inches of travel that I'm looking for in this uh, slip section. I'm gonna slide this into the U-joint, kind of line it up with the shaft that's coming out of the electric power assist unit and then I'm going to mark on there where I need to cut that shaft because right now the suspension is as low as it's going to go so that's as close as these two things are ever going to get to each other. You wouldn't want this shaft to bottom out on the spline shaft. So as the suspension goes up, these things are just going to get further away from each other. So the next step will be to cut this shaft down and attach this splined coupler to it.
So here are the components that will make up the telescoping section of the steering shaft. I went ahead and cut this spline section as short as I could to still get that five inches of travel that I was after. That allowed me to keep this section as long as I could because when the suspension is fully bottomed out, those two touching is how long this whole steering shaft will be. As the suspension droops or the chassis lifts up, these will get further and further apart. Okay, so I've got the female coupler part of this that I purchased. I went ahead and made this uh, bushing here that's the same outside diameter as that that will fit onto this portion. So I'll just weld this onto here. Then I can take this piece of tubing, sleeve it over the top of that, and weld this whole assembly together. And I'll have a telescoping steering shaft. I need to get some strong welds onto here, but I don't want too much heat to transfer up here and ruin these rubber or plastic seals that are here on this U-joint. So I'm gonna take an old shop rag, kind of soaked in cold water and wrap it around this as I weld it and uh, hopefully draw out um, most of that heat and save these seals. All right guys, I'm pretty excited about this. I've got the suspension lifted up into its highest position. This thing is telescoped out. It's hooked to the electric power steering unit. Obviously that isn't powered up yet or anything, but uh, we can test and see that indeed we can steer the tires. So right now the suspension is all the way up. If I let the jack down, you can see how this steering shaft will collapse. Suspension down, and then as we raise the suspension up, that steering shaft extends. I am very pleased with how this turned out. I'll probably end up putting a uh, zerk fitting in there so I can add some grease in there and then look for some kind of bellows or sleeve that can kind of cover this. Maybe something off of a, a kid's dirt bike, you know, those little rubber boots that are on the front forks. So we'll look for something like that. Anyway, let's get that uh, steering wheel installed and get this box wired up so we can test it out.
Here's our extremely involved steering system. We've got the Suzuki manual steering box, a U-joint, a telescoping shaft, another U-joint going into an electric power steering assist gearbox, U-joint, shaft, up to finally the steering wheel. All right, let's see if it works. All right, the moment of truth. We've got it completely hooked up from steering box all the way to steering wheel. Check it out. You can turn it. And I can turn it no problem, uh, but I don't have the electronic power steering even turned on yet. So this is just manually without it. And uh, granted, there's no weight really on this yet. The, the frame is sitting on blocks. So the only weight on the tires is the weight of the axle and the tires and wheels itself, which is most of the weight of this vehicle. All right, let's plug in this electric power assist and see how much easier it is. So I've just got it plugged into a battery sitting on the floor. Let's see what it does. Ho, 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 ho. With one finger, you can turn this thing. Oh, that's crazy. Yes. My kids will have no problem steering these big tires. That is amazing. Okay, Chase, try turning all the way left and all the way right without the power steering. It's hard. So you can do it? So Jace, is it easier now? Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Also, share it on your social media pages. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.